We're at the driving range. It's called Sticks. It's about 15 minutes from my house. Here with my brother. He's the golfer in the family. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, an older brother, Mike, Mikey. Goes by Mike now because he thinks it sounds more mature. Closest to the pin here. Oh, bar down. Not the good bar down either. <laughs> Growing up, uh, we were super competitive with everything we did. We probably hated each other until I was in seventh or eighth grade and he was a sophomore, junior in, in high school. Oh, delete that one. <laughs> delete that one, please. But everything we do, even to this day, uh, whether it's golf or, or anything, it's a competition and it's, I think it really played a big role in, in the person I am and kind of how I approach things in everyday life. He was kind of a crazy kid, not as calm as he is now. He's always playing with me and my friends, baseball, hockey in the driveway, whatever. He's trying to keep up. Me and my friends would torture him. I think that's where he gets all his competitiveness from. He had to try to keep up with us. My dad played uh, college football at University of Maine and uh, AIC in uh, Springfield, Mass. My dad was a big hockey fan and he got Mikey into it and Mikey fell in love with it. And then obviously I was kind of born into that with having Mikey playing and kind of being obsessed with it. Other than that, our mom is maybe the most unathletic human being on planet Earth. <laughs> she might get mad at me for saying that, but we say we get our good looks from our mom, but our athletic ability from our dad. Going for the shot of the century here. You gotta hit the 50 sign right in front of us. But you gotta hit it. We've definitely had uh, some numerous accounts where we've gotten into some fights. I just missed. I think I got you. No, you didn't. Not even close. I think the biggest one that, that we always laugh about now is we were golfing one time and our mom used to come and just drive the cart around for us. We're driving down the fairway. We're arguing about something and Mikey pushed me out of the golf cart while it was moving. <laughs> Full speed just shoved me out. He's just running his mouth a little too much. Oh, Toey. Probably like 3.30 carry. Not bad. <laughs> I'm the better golfer. I need something over him. That's back-to-back -back wins in the, in the golf matches for the summer. I think we only count to on course. <laughs> yeah. I just want to apologize to my mom. You are athletic. <laughs>
when he went away for the national team, he was probably 5'8". Next time I saw him, he was like six feet tall, put on probably like 20 pounds of muscle. Back comes Boldy after serving his penalty, coming in, scores! I think a lot of people were surprised that I even made the team or thought I was going to be a fourth line guy. People telling me that I was going to go there and kind of get buried in the lineup and, and not play the way that I like to play hockey, play skilled and have fun. And tight. And a backhand shot scores! What a nice play by Boldy. Just how I am as a person, I knew that that, that was going to kind of light a fire under me and, and get me going. I'm way too competitive, just take that. High slot, Boldy, shot score! I had a really good start. I had two goals and assists in our first game, so confidence was was big in that, just being able to feel comfortable there and, and know that I can play at that level was huge. It seems to me you're bigger, you're stronger, you're more mature, and a lot of that is off-ice work too, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you grow up pretty quick here, so I mean, everything they got here, it's, it's the top of the line, so it definitely helps you mature and uh, grow up a little bit. just had to progress in his game. That's just the nature of it. I'm sure he'll throw in another 20 pounds in the next year or two and I'll still beat him in a fight. Low to high. All my dreams and goals are kind of starting to come together and really come true and kind of having success there right away and doing that alongside guys like Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegris and Alex Turk, uh, Cole Caulfield's like be able to look inside myself and say, all right, I can keep up with these guys was when I kind of realized that I got a good chance to, to kind of do something special and really something good within hockey. We're uh, heading to Thayer Sports Center. Braintree, it's a little bit of a drive, 35 minutes, but going to uh, skate with a lot of guys from around the area. It's basically all NHL guys, which is a pretty good skate. There's a prep school in Massachusetts. Really good prep school. Some big names come through here, like uh, Tony Amati played here, Brooks Orpic, Ryan Whitney, Charlie Coyle played here. They got a uh, a lot of pretty good alumni that, that came through here. I want to come up here, okay? I want you to either attack this dot or this dot, and I'm going to shoot on that rope. Nice shot! Now we gotta read that space, turn back! That was ugly looking. Just a little passing here and then we're going. Hey! Holy crossbars! What I've found and have noticed over the years is players are lacking game simulation so that then they are free uh, to be able to make mistakes and try different things in their game. These guys are smart enough. They understand what they got to work on. Oh, what a play. Oh, you had him. There it is. It's my job to put them in environments to allow them to self-explore, self-develop, and then I'll give critiques when I need to. I don't want to overcoach. I don't want to be in an explicit environment. I want it to be implicit, where they then are focusing and working on different elements. It's so hard without like skating at each other, too. Yeah. So you have to follow a guy. I also love it when the players start talking with each other about certain tactics. Uh, to me, that's more beneficial than myself saying something. Shoot it! Oh! Great move. Give a pass. Now you get it, now we go. Yeah! Ew. <laughs> Just kept it going, never stopped it. <laughs> Matt is a cognitive genius, man. Like, he can see the ice. He's very, very good mentally. He's got really good hands and mitts. He uses his tools to create advantages. They're not just shiny little things in a toolbox. He knows how to apply them to create advantages. Finished high, good. Good finish. Yes, good finish. Yeah! I'm starting to lose it. I need water so bad. We got really like a best friend type relationship where we can be honest and candid with one another, so it's refreshing to have. I was out. I was out, without a doubt. I was on T Purple today. Yeah, you always are. We 
are off to Boston College where I spent two years, freshman year, sophomore year. It's about 45 minutes from my house. Being able to go there and, and play for the team that I grew up always wanted to play for, I, I dreamed of coming here and to play for Coach York and, and be a part of such a huge program in Boston College it was really special to me. Keep left. Missed two exits. Wow. What are we doing right now? Alright, we'll survive. A little detour, never hurt anyone. We're not in a rush. How are ya? What's up? This is uh, Coach Brendan Buckley, our, uh, our assistant power play specialist coach. He's a fellow BC grad, um, spent four years here, and he's made his way around here, here as well, so he knows what's going on for sure. This is the main room, pretty sweet. Still got my name in here, which is a plus. It's a pretty sick setup. Logo on the ceiling so no one steps on it. Team jacket, player of the game. We got some good names around here. Got Marshall Warren, Jack McBain, and Nikita Nesrenko all in a row. All the wild guys. They didn't want me to be a part of it, I guess, as I just noticed this. This is our basically our whiteboard, but it's all digital, which is pretty sweet. And then obviously our prayer board, where anyone who you have in your prayers or, or you're thinking of, their name will go up on the prayer board, and that's something that Coach York and everyone around here takes pretty seriously. It's kind of a cliche thing. And People talk about family and the hockey family, but it really is true here. And the majority of this locker room is about being an eagle. This is Conti Forum, home rink. It's a pretty sick setup, especially for a college rink. It's a fun place to play in, no doubt. I think the seats where I came were up here, technically, but we'd sit way up or really anywhere. We sat in the corners a lot. Anywhere where, where there's some, some open seats and we just sneak in. Did we ever put you in the stands while you were here playing? No, <laughs> not once. We talked about it yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you should have, a couple of games. I almost did it to myself. <laughs> ever since I was little and went to that first game, I knew that was where I wanted to be. It was a transition. I didn't have the best first half of my year. I don't know what it was. I thought I was still playing good hockey. I was getting a lot of chances. I don't think I was hurting the team by any means, but production-wise, it, it definitely wasn't what I was used to. He came in right away, I think, expecting to score a lot of goals, and, and that was the way what we wanted, and it didn't bounce his way right away. And I don't know how many posts you hit. What, what, way too many. He battled through it. He kept grinding, showed up every day, worked hard. And then uh, his line of uh, three other freshmen came back after Christmas break, and it was amazing to watch them kind of all come together. Here's an opportunity inside score, Matt Baldy! Being able to, to take the winter break that we had and really find it within myself to kind of calm down and, and relax and just go out there and play it was really important to me. And I went out there and kind of tore up the second half of the year and, and really made it known that stuff like that happens. Being able to go out there and do what we did the second half of the year was really special. Boldy waiting, lost it for a moment, got it back and scores! Oh, what a move! Over for Newhook, back, Boldy scores! A rifle! It was unfortunate with the pandemic, but everyone kind of went through it, but I would have loved to have seen him raise a bean potter or something like that, but that wasn't meant to be uh, with, with the circumstances that we were under. But for the most part, just seeing him kind of battle and get better and mature on the ice, off the ice, and um, you know, I think he's got big things coming in the future. Hey, Coach. Hi. Nice welcome to see back. you. Thank you. Oh, uh -huh. terrific. You know, he's always uh, uh, welcome to come back uh, all the time. He did a great job for us, and very, very proud of him. And Thanks, Coach. He's a terrific organization, like you know, with the uh, Wild and Billy Guerin uh, steering the ship there. So, but he's a great, great representative of BC hockey. We select Matt Baldy. I'm kind of waiting for your name to be called, but I couldn't be happy to be called by the Wild. Minnesota Wild trying to add more skill to their lineup. Matthew Baldy fills the bill. Here I come. Here I come. Breaking out, he scores! Here comes, finding my way. 
one-timer. Boldy, he scores! Here I come. Here come on, come on. Ah! Let's go, boys. Oh, boy. Boldy and Fiala in on the forecheck. Boldy goes down in the corner. Boldy still trying to get back to his feet in the corner. Boldy putting no weight on his left leg as he gets to the bench. It was a preseason game for Chicago. Foot got tied up on the boards as I was trying to kind of get out of there and turn away and just kind of twisted it weird. And right away, I kind of felt the pain right at my ankle. You never want to see it happen to anybody, but he's pretty resilient. Um, hockey players go through it. Best looking feet in the league. <laughs> yeah, it stinks. I think everyone would be a little bit disappointed. Obviously, it hasn't been the most fun thing, but uh, it's all part of hockey, so ended up being a fracture in the talus bone in my ankle. So, I mean, it's a broken bone, so it's four to six weeks to heal, and um, we're, we're approaching that now, and it's, it's starting to get better. I want you to stand on the right foot. We're going to do like 10 reps right foot on the ground. This is the hydrotherapy area here. So we have hot tub, cold tub. This is our PT pool, which is what we call it. And so it has underwater treadmill. A big benefit to pool therapy is the deeper you get into a pool, the more pressure there is. So go just kind of squat into it. There you go, yep, just like that. And it's just like you're pushing off, yep, with your legs, just kind of keep it down. Exactly. In a treadmill pool, it also takes that weight off. So you're looking at, not gravity free, but you're looking at taking a lot of that body weight off of the injured player. Lunch up on the treadmill. That pool treadmill has been, been really good to me. I mean, those guys have taken care of me. They know what they're doing and they've been through this exact injury before with other guys, which which is good because know, they know it works, what doesn't, and progress has been good. We'll do some flutter kicking. Just kind of get, get that going, yeah. At the start of his injury, you know, he was not able to weight bear on it. And so we can get him in here where we're actually weight bearing a small percentage, and he was able to do that pain free. I think we're good there. Good job. My confidence coming in every day and being able to do a little bit more and then a little bit more and just all that adding on top of each other makes me uh, feel good. Being able to start skating now and, and doing other stuff, it, it definitely helps me mentally to, to really realize that I'm getting pretty close to being able to come back. Keep it in a little tighter. Yeah. And just look for smoothness. Straight up, press straight up. Perfect. Obviously, I'd rather be out there practicing every day with the guys and, and being able to go full go. Nice and smooth, right? Yeah. I think that's why you show up every day, to work hard and kind of improve every day to get better and stronger with it. Nice and tall. Squeeze the plates as hard as you can. It's because you want to get back so quick and you, you want to be with those guys again. Good job. Thanks. Finally, Tom, the long-awaited debut of a highly regarded rookie. Boy, this is going to be fun to see Matt Boldy in a wild uniform. The Millis, Massachusetts native, what a throw for him to make his NHL debut just miles from where he grew up. First people I call are my parents right away, just letting them know, and they are super excited for me. It was awesome just to hear their excitement and have it in Boston. Obviously made it really easy for them to be there. And then I called my brother, which uh, is probably the coolest part, I think. I just told him that I was going to play, and he goes, all right, how many tickets do I have to buy? My brother was on the glass with all of his buddies wearing all my uh, my jerseys from the past, which I guess they stole from my closet. So uh, that kind of loosened me up a little bit and gave me a good laugh. Tonight, we got a couple rookies, but this guy's from this hometown. His name is Matt Boldy. Wow! Oh, baby! All right. Up front, we got Zook. Hey, oh! Hey, Happy. Hey! Artsy. Hey! On the back, and we got Dumba. Hey! Rose. Hey! Apple and that. Hey! hey! Not one stumble. Let's go! And we're underway from Boston. Dumbo will hold. 
Sets up Boldy, backhands a pass onto the tape of Polino out in front, and it just goes off the outside of the net. That is a terrific feed by the youngster, Matt Boldy. It's so weird thinking young Lang Son playing against Marshawn and Bergeron. It's so weird. For her, I'm her little baby, and that's always how she's going to view me. So I think her seeing me out there with those guys, for her, those people are like gods in, in her eyes because she can't process any of it, so. Zuccarello works the left point. Goes to drink wide. Shot, score! Oh, there is the quick trigger from Carell the Thrill. Oh. Keep it in. Oh boy. Started just kind of a broken down play. It was Brody made a really good pass up through, through the middle. There you go. We ended up having a three on two and kind of got the middle of the ice, kicked it over to Felino, and he made an unbelievable pass to me. And from there, I was just not freaking out once I got it. Make it happen. Yes! Right back over the line, Boldy found Felino, back to Boldy with a shot. He scores! Yes! Yeah! Matt Boldy in his NHL debut in his hometown, no less. And then after that, I don't, I don't really remember too much. We obviously weren't playing great before that game, and a spark like that kind of ignited us. And just so happy for Matt and, and his family, and, and to do it in front of his family is really special. Hey, Let's go, baby! Let's go! It's a special moment, no matter what, playing your first NHL game. But to have hundreds of friends and family there, it's it's really cool, and to share that moment with them is, is awesome. And the horn sound, and the Wild win it 3-2 tonight in Boston. Matt Boldy, the game winner in his NHL debut. We kept our heads, stayed calm, held the win, great job. <laughs> yeah. Luckiest shot of his life. Is that where they filmed the Mighty Duck? Yeah, I think so, but there it is. <laughs>